Today, I'm going to teach you how to edit nice browns like these photos in Lightroom and stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you some secret sauce in Adobe Photoshop with a plugin that I use on pretty much every single photo that I deliver to my clients to add some polish and differentiate me from all of the other photographers in our area. So we're jumping into Lightroom right now and this is our base image and it's looking okay off the bat, but I want to make a few adjustments very quickly. Now, first I want to point out that nothing is cut off. Let me show you our uh, histogram here. You know, everything is kind of properly exposed. There's nothing that's, you know, uh, super severe in terms of the highlights uh, and in terms of the low lights that are going to be like super clipped or anything like that. Let's ho hover over here. Nothing really clipping highlights, just the highlights and some of the branches in the street. And we'll be able to recover that because we shot raw um, ISO 2500, 50 millimeter Sigma lens, uh, shot at F 5.6 and uh, one over 250 of, of a second. I'm going to scroll down here and just do some lens correction. I'm just going to enable the profile collection. Second thing we're going to do is we're just going to do some basic uh, edits in the basics panel. As shot, we got our color balance right. When we're editing for those nice brown tones, they live in the orange areas. Those beige tones live in the orange areas. So when we're editing for those kind of creamy brown tones. It's a really um, high luminance um, orange is really what that really is, like skewing a little bit more towards yellow and away from red. But that's also where some of our skin tones live. What we want to do is in pre-production, we want to move into a space that has a lot of stuff with earth tones in it already. Um, and so we have some of those beiges in there with their outfit. Our, our clients knew they wanted that. So we said, hey, if you're going to dress make sure it's neutrals that are beige, cream colored, or black, um, as we're going to be able to uh, get that look that you're wanting um, easier with that. Or if you're using grays, we can, we can do that. So their couch was gray, their walls were gray, but we moved into the space intentionally. And greens, we can also shift greens later to kind of make them feel a little bit more earth tone as well, which, you know, gives to the, the vibe of that kind of like creamy brown beige look. So let's, edit for our subjects here. We're going to bring our shadows up and just kind of match all uh, the rest of the image. All right. And I'm not going to really worry about what it's doing to our client's shirt because we can fix that later because it is bringing up that black value a little bit and I don't really like that. So what we're actually going to do is bring our blacks down and we're going to get some of that back. What does this do to our highlights and our subject? Ooh. Um, that's pretty good. Again, I'm not worrying about the background. I'm just worrying about this area right in here. But let's move down into our tone curve. And we could do pretty much everything we just did up here, down in our turn, tone curves, if you want to do that. Um, so I'm just going to add just a, ooh, control Z. We're just gonna add just a tiny bit down to like the absolute bottom end here. Now, before I actually go into the color mixer, I want to get the global edits. And usually I say leave global edits to the end, but because we know what we're doing, um, I actually want to bring my mid-tone or highlight colors here up to this like orange, like right where you see the big delineation between uh, red and yellow. That's kind of where we want to go. And I try not to push it too far or else you get something like that. And it looks like, you know, you got your white balance off completely. I'm actually going to dial it back the saturation technically. And I'm gonna move this over here. I think that's about good. We might be able to even push it just slightly past there. I try to keep the outside of the ring anchored on the center point. I, if you push it past that, it usually starts to look very fake and unnatural. So this is our mid-tones and I might have misspoke earlier and said highlights, but I'm gonna do our highlights in the same area. And what you're gonna see is that our highlights start casting a bit of a, a that warmth uh, of the yellowy orange into areas like this, into pure white areas. They are no longer pure white. Um, what they're doing is adding a like a, a bit of a hue to that white. So there's a before and the after, and you can kind of see right there what we've did. We're going to actually add the opposite to the shadows in order to create chromatic contrast. And so we're gonna get down here into the, the blues and we're gonna do the same thing, anchor the outside of the ring on the center point here, but we're gonna add a little bit more blue to the shadows. And so what that does is it retains contrast, but chromatically retains contrast. So next thing we're gonna do is move up to our color mixer. I'm actually gonna shift our greens 
and you can see in the plant life outside and inside, I'm gonna shift it closer to yellow. And we could desaturate that if we want a little bit and we could add a little bit more luminance to kind of brighten it up, help it pop a little bit more. We're gonna move over to our yellows and I'm not gonna probably play with this too, too much. Yeah, not playing with that too much. Our oranges, this is where our skin tones live. So if your particular image, like let's say your subjects are a little bit more washed out, you can add a little bit more saturation to them, right? See, make them look a little bit more Oompa Loompa-y if you need to. Uh, we're not going to, I'm actually going to increase the luminance to about plus 10 uh, because I feel like that's just maybe a little bit too dark in that skin tone. Uh, now they're looking a, a lot more natural here, in my opinion. So that's the before and the after of our grade there. And it's doing a lot of work for us, right? Now, what we can do is we can bump up the vibrance a little bit to help us out. There's two things you could do that could help us out if you found this video helpful at all. One, you can just say thanks for this video down in the comments, or you can hit subscribe. Those are two free ways to help support me and my wife as we try and grow this channel. I think we're in a pretty good spot. So let's look at the before and the after, the before and the after. And I'd say we're pretty close to being there. Now there's a few uh, touch-ups that we wanna do. So like I said, in the background here, we are a little bit washed out. We are going to paint this area in over here behind these windows. So what I'm going to do is grab our whites and move them down just a little bit, move the exposure down just a little bit. Actually, that's quite a lot of bit. Let's move our highlights down. There we go, and we can change the intensity of that. And I am liking that quite a bit more. So I'm gonna grab another selection here. All right, so as you can see, uh, this is not quite a jet black and we want it to be nice and black. It had a red hue to it in the uh, highlights and in some of the shadows there. And that's just uh, and that's just a little bit uh, of a holdover from when we boosted you know, our exposures and things like that. So one cool thing about the color black is we just go down and we desaturate it, right? See how it has like a red hue here and we pull down the saturation, it no longer has that hue to it. The other thing we can do is just in that section, we can bring the shadows down. We can bring the highlights down in it. And now that's looking significantly better. Coming down to the effects, we're gonna add just a tiny bit of vignetting here. I'm going to add just a little bit here. And then maybe we add a linear gradient down here that kind of matches the, the angle of the couch and the end table there. And uh, let's see, we're gonna bring the exposure down just a tiny bit. Same thing, we're gonna do the opposite thing up at the top, linear gradient to kind of match the angle there. So here is our little before and after, before and after. Now we're gonna hit it with the secret sauce in Photoshop. Don't tell anybody that I told you this. We're gonna right click and we are going to edit in Photoshop 2024 or 2025 or 2026 if you're watching this a year from now. Now, you can see over here that I have this panel called Retouch For Me. You can use code Flannery20 to get a uh, discount on this if you end up liking it, um, but we're going to run a few different things on here that has completely sped up our workflow. So we're gonna add this thing called portrait volumes. We're gonna do dodge and burn. We're gonna do mattifier, which gets rid of specular highlights on the skin. So uh, on the cheek here, it's gonna just reclaim a little bit of those details. Um, and it's going to help with some of the folds in fabrics and just kind of like uh, reduce how uh, intense that they appear. And so I'm going to hit retouch and this is just using AI, um, trained on models. And as you can see, here's our before and here's our after. And the big thing you might notice is with the before and after on the fabric here, um, you can see in the pants and in her pants here, it just gets rid of a lot of wrinkles, same in the couches here. So now you can see here's our before, here's our after. And we're gonna do just a little bit more post-processing here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to bring down the texture just a little bit. And that's the little polish, you know, that makes everything look a little bit less rough around the edges. Maybe negative 26, negative 10. I'm going to do negative 15 and see where that gets us. We're not losing all skin texture, but we are... Um, creating some nice contrast there. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, please hit the subscribe button. Um, that'll just help us reach our goal of monetization by summer a lot faster.